From war hero to homeless refugee to renowned watchmaker, the life of Antoni Patek was as dynamic as the watches he made. Thrown into war at the young age of 16 and then forced to flee his country with no belonging. No one could have ever imagined the empire he was about to build, not even himself. This is the life and legacy that beget Antoni Patek and the journey is just as riveting as the company itself. Originally of Polish descent, Antoni Norbert de Patek was born in 1812 to Anna and Joachim Patek, and they all lived together in Warsaw. But tragedy struck when, at the young age of 16, his father died, and a few months later, young Antoni was drafted into the Polish 1st Mounted Rifles Regiment in the war against Russia. Three years later, and with numerous battle wounds to attest to his valor, 19-year-old Antoni was promoted to the rank of second lieutenant and was awarded the highest honor, the Virtuti Military Golden Cross for his bravery. But things were about to take a drastic turn. With Russia winning the war and closing in on Polish territory, Antoni and thousands of other soldiers had to flee to neighboring France as refugees. But their refugee status didn't last long as pressure from Russia forced the French government to issue a decree that forced most Polish refugees out of the country. Soon enough, Antoni found himself in Switzerland as a refugee with no wealth, land, or even citizenship. But he would soon find himself introduced to a venture that would change his life and define an entire industry. A refugee in Geneva, Patek began his search for a source of livelihood and started to trade in rare and expensive pocket watches that were still very exclusive at the time. Patek would buy these watches from Geneva watchmakers who were already known for for their quality products. Under his keen direction, these watches would be engraved with precious metal cases and refined with the most elegant designs. He placed high value and importance on the quality and detail of each timepiece he produced and soon built a reputation for his exceptional work. His watches soon found a market for collectors of such fine timepieces and his reputation grew from Geneva to the rest of Switzerland. Together with fellow Polish immigrant and watchmaker Francesc Czapek, in addition to half a dozen gifted craftsmen, Patek founded his company, initially known as Patek Czapek & Co. The small company made highly exclusive and rare timepieces so rare that they were made on demand only. The company made about 200 watches annually and did so wonderfully for about six years until tensions between Patek and Chapek reached a tipping point. Both men parted ways and for over a year the company was simply known as Patek & Co. That was until he met another watchmaker that would go on to be his lifelong partner. Adrian Philippe was already a renowned watchmaker having invented the keyless winding mechanism which was gaining popularity at the time. When Philippe joined forces with Patek's expert craftsmanship, they truly became a force to reckon with and in 1851 Patek, Philippe and Co. was born with both men setting perfection as the only true measure of their crafts. The watches they produced received recognition well beyond the borders of Switzerland and Europe. The company maintained two primary ideals. Firstly, all watches produced must maintain the highest quality possible. And second, new inventions and technical solutions must always be considered and implemented where possible. The quality of Patek watches were so renowned that an open-faced keyless winding watch called the Queen Victoria was presented at the Great Exhibition of London to Her Majesty Queen Victoria on the 18th of August, 1851. Over the years, the company pioneered and popularized certain wristwatch designs and configurations that were unheard of back in the 19th century. Watch configurations such as the perpetual calendar, the split second hand, the chronograph, and the minute repeater in mechanical watches were commonly found found in Patek Philippe watches. Patek himself played a major role in moving the company's products beyond Switzerland as he frequently traveled to the United States, England and even Russia considering his history with the Soviet state. He established trade routes and fostered international customers as well as discovering whole new markets for his watches. The company also made numerous strides in patenting several designs and watch configurations.
inventions, some of which include a patent for a precision regulator in 1881 and the patent for a perpetual calendar mechanism for pocket watches. After nearly 40 years of industry-changing impact and a stride for success that would span centuries, Antoine Patek died at the age of 65 in March 1877. And while his death was a great loss to his family and the business he had come to build, it did not stop the company as others rose up in his absence. Unexpectedly, none of Antoni Patek's children took his place in the business. Instead, Adrian Philippe's son-in-law, Joseph Benassi Philippe, succeeded Antoni Patek at the company. Patek Philippe & Co. continued to grow exponentially, maintaining its hallmark for quality over quantity, and did so flawlessly until its second founder, Adrian Philippe, died in 1894. But unlike Patek, Philippe's position at the company was succeeded by his youngest son, Joseph Emile Philippe. At the turn of the century in 1901, Patek Philippe would be restructured into a joint stock company with seven shareholders the majority of which were controlled by Joseph Benassi and Joseph Emile Philippe. Both men proved they had learned from the best and carried on the legacy of Patek Philippe, much so that their watches caught the attention of arguably the greatest scientific mind in the world, Albert Einstein. Einstein ordered a custom gold pocket watch from Patek Philippe in 1916, a year in which he coincidentally completed his renowned theory of relativity. That year turned out to be a great year for the company as they produced the world's very first ladies wristwatch with a five-minute repeater, but unknown to them, a dark cloud was about to hit the entire global economy. The Great Depression saw the end of many businesses around the world and Patek Philippe wasn't left out. The company was on the verge of bankruptcy and to prevent it from going under, it was sold off to the Swiss Stern family in 1932. This was a time when century-old businesses were closing down and that was almost the fate of Patek Philippe. But the Stern brothers decided they would dabble in the watchmaking business a little longer. The Stern family had been long-standing suppliers of watch dials to Patek Philippe and hence had an understanding of how the business was run. The company remained a family-owned business, but at this point had no descendants or family of the founders as controlling partners. The Swiss Stern family proved they made the right decision in acquiring Patek Philippe as they grew the company's customer and market base, opening branches in both North and South America, Asia, and Australia over the years. Over the course of the 20th century, the Stern family maintained controlling interest in the company with a Stern family member always presiding as president or chairman of the board. From Charles Stern, who originally purchased the company in 1932, to his son Henry Stern taking over as president in 1958, and was then succeeded by his son Philippe Stern in 1993. Thierry Stern took over as president in 2009, succeeding his father and continuing the legacy of the Patek Philippe brand. Patek Philippe has maintained a steady lead and impact in the global watch industry with exclusive limited edition timepieces that truly stand and the test of time. As reported by the company in 2010, they produced just under 40,000 time pieces, which is relatively small compared to other brands which sold hundreds of thousands. But this was the Patek Philippe hallmark, its rarity and sheer exclusivity. The total number of watches produced and sold is strategically increased each year with 58,000 units produced in 2017 and 62,000 in 2018. The company only increases by less than a tenth of its previous year and is still making record sales nonetheless. Timepieces by Patek Philippe have fetched some of the highest prices ever sold at auctions anywhere in the world. Amongst the top 10 most expensive watches sold in the year 2018, seven of them were Patek Philippe watches. Currently, watches by Patek Philippe make up over 40 of the 50 most expensive watches ever sold at an auction. The company has an unofficial policy for selling only to collectors rather than traders in a bid to retain and possibly increase the watch's value rather than possibly being sold off loosely by traders. This is evident in the company's slogan which states, you never actually own a Patek Philippe, you merely look after it for the next generation. A mantra that was sung true to this very day. Born from the sheer will and dedication of a Polish refugee seeking to make his mark in the world, Patek Philippe has grown to be nothing short of an empire. Spanning three centuries, surviving the Great Depression, and still managing to remain a family-owned business in this era of IPOs and publicly traded companies, Patek Philippe remains as timeless as the watches they make. And that's all for today, guys. Till next time.